but homelessness is on the increase. You know, it's not, not bad here yet. But look at San Francisco, the most beautiful cities on earth, very, very much like Sydney. People are homeless all over the place. They can't afford a house. Is it as bad as we, we see it on TV, but, but is, is it that bad? I went to see it myself. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's spreading all across America. Except Texas. 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 Everyone's moving to Texas. Yeah. That's Texas and Florida. Me. Texas and Florida. So it just, just um, on the stock market, and I'd like to get your take on this. I read some articles recently um, that were talking about um, the valuations of American stocks, particularly some of those ones that are sort of trading in that AI territory and the multiples that are sort of sitting against these stock trades. And they're sort of saying that this article, it was some, actually it was in The Economist, but it's sort of indicating that it's just not possible to grow from here at the same rate or in anywhere near the rate that, that it has grown in the past and that the people are buying, paying prices today based on future outcomes. And it only, all it, you know, I mean, if I want to be a naysayer or a, a, um, perhaps a stock pessimist, or just call me a naysayer, then I would be shorting the market. In other words, I'd be selling stocks because it just can't continue to grow at the rate it's been Correct. growing. Um, but on the flip side of it, it just keeps growing. I don't understand it. I, I don't play in the American market in particular. Um, why, what's going on? Is it people just got this fever, I better buy, and uh, they have no idea what they're buying and they're just getting convinced? Well, there's no financial education in America. You, know? you look at our leaders, you know, most of the people who run our Federal Reserve Bank and our government, they're PhDs, like my poor dad. Poor PhD stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. <laughs> Look at this guy Bernanke, you know, I mean, he was the Bernanke, Fed chairman. Yeah, yeah. When, it, when it crashed, he dropped interest rates to zero and printed trillions. So today, America's in this huge bubble, this cash sitting everywhere. And the stock market's in a bubble, real estate's in a bubble and all this. How much longer can go? Today, America's the number one debtor nation in the world. Every 90 days, they're printing another trillion dollars to cover the shortfall. And they're issuing it as debt. Yeah, they're printing more money because our taxes don't cover our expenses. They're printing a trillion dollars every 90 days. Wow. And there's still no financial education. And then you look at China, the Evergrande went down and uh, Market Garden went down. China's going bankrupt and so is Germany. So, you know, as I say, when America sneezes, Aussie gets pneumonia. And so we're the lucky country, but the world is caving in around you guys. So that's the spooky part. So that's why I, I say to everybody, buy some silver, you know, silver's about 20 bucks. It used to be 50 US. And then I like Bitcoin, because Bitcoin gets stronger, dollar gets weaker. This is a correlation. Yeah, that's, so I own like, I think 60 Bitcoin or something, not much, but you know, I was buying it at 6,000. Wow. And you, you're sitting on a nice profit now. Yeah. Well. It's better that than losing it, you know. No, but, and, but, but given that you're sitting on a profit, I mean, would you consider cashing it in and your, your profit, taking your profit off the table now? Well, you're a banker. I borrow against assets. Can you and can you borrow against your Bitcoin? Of course, I can. Yeah, that's not something that is is taken has taken on here in Australia at this stage, yeah. but it is to come that you should be able to borrow against your Bitcoin because it's an asset. Yeah. I mean, there might be an issue around what the, the leverage is, yeah. but it doesn't matter yeah. because of the volatility of the pricing. But you should be able to borrow against your Bitcoin. Bitcoin here is, hasn't really taken off as a, as a, with merchants. How, how uh, prevalent is uh, merchants in, in uh, making Bitcoin available or, or any of the cryptos available in terms of transactions? Well, Bitcoin is, you know, people's money. I say gold and silver are God's money because God put it here. But Bitcoin is people's money. That's the blockchain technology. <clears throat> and blockchain technology is basically a ledger, you know, a financial statement. And um, that's why the, I think Aussie will probably come up with his own central bank digital. Yeah. And I'm afraid there, I, I don't have any proof of this, but they'll use central bank money to surveil you. That's what China does. So they know what you're spending your money on. If, you, if you're buying too many drugs, they'll come after you, you're doing this. So they're gonna use our money as a uh, surveillance tool. I'm afraid of that. So that's why I own tons of silver coins. So if 
push comes to a shelf, I'll come pay you in silver. But actual physical silver, silver coins. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the old days when people used to buy Krugerrands. Correct, correct. The old gold Kru- Kru- Krugerrands. I'll yeah. tell you a story. I was, fly- I was a pilot in Vietnam. And then it was in 72, and Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So my rich dad said, watch out, the world's going to change. So I said, how's it going to change? So, said, so I flew behind enemy lines. Marine, Marines are not the brightest guys on earth. I flew behind enemy lines to a gold. You know, I was reading the map of Vietnam. There's a pick and shovel, AU, gold. Like Aussie, gold, you know. I said, well, let's go behind, but let's go buy some gold. He said, yeah, but it's enemy alliance. He says, we'll be in and out very quick. <laughs> so my co-pilot and I, we're not smart guys. We walk up to the gold window. We're in a village, you know, people are staring, what the hell are these guys doing here? Don't they know? We, we, we disarmed, no weapons, walked in. So we come as capitalists, not Marines, you know. I'm talking to this little Vietnamese woman with red teeth. And I think gold was, let's say $50. I tried to give her 30 for it. And she looked at me and went, spot. I'm like, what? I said, 30. Spot. I didn't know what spot meant. I said, I got a spot in my shirt or something. And she was talking about gold is the same price throughout the world. That little Vietnamese woman, I don't, I don't think she went to Harvard. And then she was none of these available. Yeah. And she was telling me, she was teaching me the best lessons of all. So we came home empty handed. And I flew then to Hong Kong. And I bought my first gold rand. Gold was a Kruger rand. 50 bucks I paid for it. I still have that Kruger rand today. Oh, wow. And it's now worth 2200 So the Kruger rand didn't change in size, but the dollar came down, you know. 